This is a video on how to create free body diagrams. Now free body diagrams are also sometimes known as force diagrams. And a free body diagram is a drawing of an object or a part of an object removed from its environment at a single moment in time with the forces acting on that object drawn as vectors. So what does that mean? Well, a free body diagram is just a picture of an object and nothing else involved with that object is drawn with it. And then all the things or all the forces that act on that object are drawn as arrows showing the direction that they're pushing or pulling on the object. Basically, a free body diagram is a picture that helps you do your physics or engineering problem. So let's look at an example. Here we have a pair of scissors. And there are no forces acting on these scissors. But let's say we use these scissors to cut a cardboard tube. And to do that, we come in and we apply some pressure on the handles here of our scissors. And as a result, the scissors put some force on the cardboard tube. Now it just so happens that if the cardboard tube is having forces pushed on it, the cardboard tube is going to push back the same amount. And therefore, the pressure that we're putting on the handles here also pushes back on our hand the same amount, at least until we cut through the cardboard tube then the cardboard tube stops giving us forces back. But before that happens, the cardboard tube gives us the same amount of force that we're putting against it. Now there are several free body diagrams we can create from this situation. We can look at the free body diagram of the scissors. And to do that, we take away everything that isn't part of the scissors. So basically we have to take away the cardboard tube. And then when we draw a free body diagram, we don't include any of the forces that the scissors are exerting on the world. We only care about the forces the world is putting on the scissors. So we don't care about the forces that the scissors are putting on the cardboard tube. But we do care about the forces that the tube is putting on the scissors because our free body diagram only cares about or is concerned with the scissors. That also means that this free body diagram only cares about the forces our hands are putting on the scissors. It doesn't care about the forces the scissors are putting on our hands. So now we have a picture of our scissors and this picture includes only the forces the outside world is putting on our scissors. This here is the free body diagram for the scissors. It's a picture of the object at one moment in time as it's cutting through a tube, but we don't draw the tube, we just represent the tubes, or at least the forces the tube creates on our diagram as these arrows. And the same thing for the forces our hands put on the scissors as these arrows. Now perhaps you only want to know about part of the scissors. Say we only wanted to know what the forces were on the top handle of our scissors. Well then we could take this bottom piece or bottom cutting blade and top handle piece and remove it from the scissors. Now in this moment in time, the tube is still putting a force on the blade of our scissors. And our hand is still putting pressure on the handle of our scissors. But here at the center, there's another force. And this is the force from the pin that keeps our scissors together. Now this F and this P is the exact same F and P that were in the other drawing. Because the force from our hand and the force from the tube haven't changed. But since we only care about half of the scissors, we include this other force here where the two pieces of scissors 
or the pair, are joined together. This would be the free body diagram for the lower blade of this pair of scissors when it's cutting the cardboard tube. Now there's another common example that you'll see of free body diagrams and that's the skier. This skier has two forces acting on him. One is gravity. Gravity is always acting on objects and it's acting on the skier and it's trying to pull him towards the center of the earth. However, the skier doesn't sink to the center of the earth. In fact, he doesn't sink all the way through the snow, so the snow pushes back on the skier. This is what we call a normal force. This blue arrow is our normal force. Normal forces always push back perpendicular to the surface that your object is not sinking through. Your skier is not sinking through the side of the mountain. So the normal force pushing back is perpendicular to the side of the mountain. This is the free body diagram for the skier. It's just the drawing of the skier and then the forces that are acting upon the skier drawn in as vectors. We have the gravity vector and the normal force vector. So now let's look at one of the most common free body diagrams that you'll be required to draw in a physics class. And this is the suspended block. This block is suspended by two strings, each one approaching the block at a different angle. Typically, you'll be asked to draw a free body diagram of the block. Well, that's not too bad. The first thing to do is to remove the block from its environment. So there's a picture of my block. And next I want to draw all the forces acting on the block. Well, gravity is always acting on the block. So we got gravity or weight. We also have those two strings because realize if gravity was the only thing pulling on this block it would fall. But the block doesn't fall, it's suspended by the two strings. Now strings only work in tension. Strings only pull. If you try to push on two ends of a string, the string just curls up. But if you pull on both ends of the string, the string works and gives you what we call a tension force. Now when we draw a tension force from a string, you have to draw it at the same angle that the string was going. So the string on the left hand side made a 45 degree angle with the wall. If this is the wall, this angle was 45 degrees, which actually, if you assume that the wall makes a perpendicular angle with the ground and with the top of this block, then you could say that this is also 45 degrees. The other string made an angle with the wall of 75 degrees. And again, if you assume the top of the block is perpendicular with the wall, then if this angle is 75, this angle must be 15 degrees. Imagine a right triangle here. The hypotenuse of this right triangle is the tension force. This angle, we were told before, from the string is 75 degrees. If we can assume that this is a right angle, then this is a right triangle, and this last angle also has to be 15 degrees. So I'm going to call this tension force on the left hand side, tension 1, and the force from the second string, tension 2, and there are no other forces acting on this block. So I've drawn the block, I've drawn it by itself away from its environment, and I've drawn all the forces acting on the block as vectors and I drew them in their proper directions. This is the free body diagram for the block that's suspended by two strings. This is the free body diagram for this block. This here is tension force 1, this here is tension force 2, and then of course there's always gravity.
Now let's look at one more common free body diagram that you'll typically have to draw in a standard physics one class. And this is the old block on an incline. Basically we have a block here and it's on a wedge so it, at an incline and the block is generally going to move in this direction. Now, this problem here is a lot like the skier. Just imagine the block is the skier and the wedge here is the mountain. If we want to draw a free body diagram of the block, then we draw the block by itself. We know that gravity is acting on the block and gravity always goes towards the center of the earth so it always goes straight down. This is the force due to gravity. We also know that the block does not sink into the wedge, which means there's a normal force coming from the wedge that prevents the block from passing through the wedge. Normal forces are always perpendicular to the point of impact or the point of contact. So our normal force is in this direction. I'm going to call that N for normal force. And there are no other forces acting on this block. So this is the free body diagram for the block on the incline. Now let's go back to this picture. And instead of doing the free body diagram of the block, let's do the free body diagram for the wedge. Well, the first step is to draw the wedge and remove it from its environment. So there's our wedge. It has gravity acting on it. It's not sinking through the ground, so it also has a normal force acting on it. And this normal force goes straight up because the ground is flat. And the normal force is always perpendicular to the plane of contact. Now that's not the only thing acting on this wedge. Don't forget that there's a block on top of it. This force from the block is the same normal force that was acting on the block before when we did the free body diagram for the block. So this is the normal force from the block acting the other way. And there are no other forces acting on this wedge. So this would be the free body diagram for the wedge. Now sometimes this block on the wedge gets a little bit more complicated. So let's look at one last example. Sometimes we add a second block. We attach a string to our first block, which we string over a pulley, and then we attach it to a second block, which is pulling on the pulley and the string from the other direction. Our red block here is our second block. Now if you're given a drawing like this and you're asked to find the free body diagram or draw the free body diagram for the block, you have to ask which block? It's easy to draw the free body diagram for the red block. The red block has gravity working on it and it has a string pulling on it in the other direction. And I'm going to call that the force of tension. This is the free body diagram for the red block. Now if you wanted to draw the free body diagram for the green block, well you draw the green block separately away from its environment. There's my green block. This green block has gravity working on it. It's got a normal force from the wedge. It's also got tension from the string because the string's pulling on it. These are all the forces working on the green block and this is the free body diagram for the green block. So that's how you draw free body diagrams including some simple examples and it may become clear as you start working on some problems. But remember that free body diagrams are just a tool for you to use and it's supposed to help you do your physics or engineering problem. It helps you see what's going on and it helps you see the forces without having to look at every other object in the space around that object. 